Praise the Lord, everybody. I know we still have a few moments, but can we stand and enter into the presence of God today with worship unto the Lord? Can we enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise? Hallelujah. With lifted hands, let's begin to seek the Lord right now. Let's begin to prepare the atmosphere for the Spirit of God to move today. God, I give you praise for what you're doing in this house today. I give you praise for the touch of God today. I pray that you would fill this place with your glory today. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to step out if you feel led. Amen. That you would begin to move in the Holy Ghost as our amen youth and as different ones begin to pray let's begin to fill this house with worship and adoration let us enter in because the Lord is here today because he is here anything can happen because Jesus is here anything is possible he is the Lord most high he is the possessor of heaven and earth he is God and there is nobody beside him there is nobody like our God he is glorious in power he is unmatched and unparalleled in splendor and I give you praise Lord we lift up our hearts to you today oh God with expectation we look upward God knowing that you are our defense knowing that you are our deliverer knowing that you are our king you're our sovereign Lord you are Jesus hear O Israel the Lord our God he is one Lord and we will worship our one God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah Jesus. I give you praise because there's nobody like you. I speak the name of Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus into the atmosphere. I love you Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it church. Would you lift your voice unto the Lord. Lift your hands and then lift your voice higher than your hands. In Jesus' name, fill this house with your glory today. In the name of the Lord, let us enter in to his presence in Jesus' name. Addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Shadows burn like a 
the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. 
no matter what you're facing no matter what you're going through every situation is greeted with in Jesus name if it's good in Jesus name if it's bad in Jesus name because the power is in the name and the devil hates that name but we're going to declare that name we're going to shout that name we're going to speak that name we're going to walk through our houses and cover our houses in the name of Jesus we're going to cover our children in the name of Jesus we're going to cover every part of our lives with the name of Jesus Amen. Amen. And we're going to cover this house today and those that are sick with the name of Jesus. The Bible talks about, is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint with oil praying over them and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord, if I say the Lord, will raise them up. And so we're going to give God a chance today to be God and do what only God can do. They're going to sing it again but if you have a need in your life I'm inviting you to come down to give us an opportunity for the elders of the church and those with faith to pray over you today and I'm believing God is going to heal your body. I'm believing God is going to touch you in a way that's going to give you length of days and strength of life. Can we lift our hands right now and begin to pray and I invite you as you feel led to come down here as you desire to do so. Amen. Let's see God do a great work. Come on, Parkway. Begin to lift your hands all over this place this morning. If you know of a God that's never left you or forsaken you, that stayed the by Lord your side. Is my shepherd. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. Sing, I won't fear. I won't. With anointing, filled with anointing. Oh, when my cup's overflowing, my cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. i 
you're never alone. Yeah. <laughs> 
Even when I made the mess myself You never left my side You never left my side Can y'all attest to that this morning?
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise. I give you worship. I give you adoration. There is nobody like you, Jesus. Lord, pour into this sanctuary. Pour into this sanctuary. Be renewed in the Holy Ghost today. Be strengthened in the Holy Ghost today. Be strengthened by the power of His might today. from God and that's okay everybody say that's okay because when God shows up you want to let God be God you don't want to tell God not now you don't want to tell God sometime later you want God to move now when he wants to move I want to thank this great church for responding one more time would you lift your hands in thanksgiving for the move of God that is here in our midst today I give you worship I give you praise I give you adoration hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus most times in this moment we would prepare to receive an offering this is a great church and we're going to give you a chance to give however it's going to be a little bit different today because i feel the lord moving and prompting me amen that we need to go straight to the word of god in this moment i encourage you for those who had and desire to give Amen. The ushers, Brother Fortenbear, if you would place, amen, the baskets up here, that whenever we have an opportunity for an altar call, that you would come and bring whatever the Lord lays upon your heart. In whatever manner you want to give or desire to give, that you would give as unto the Lord. How many of you know that you cannot outgive God? You cannot outgive God. Before we transition, I want to take a moment as you're making your way back to your seats i want to welcome to our service today our lieutenant governor delbert hoseman and would you give god praise for his leadership thank you lord god i read this morning literally i read the scripture where paul said first of all he said i want you to give prayer supplication intercession he said do this for those who are in authority that you may lead a quiet and a peaceful life. I want us right now to lift our hands and pray for those who are in government, especially within our state, that the Spirit of God would move upon them and in them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray God that in our state capital, in the city of Jackson, Mississippi, that the Holy Ghost would come down in that building, that you would override the will of men, and that God, even when men would think to do one thing, God, you prevail in them to do something entirely different. For God, we are your subjects. We were created in your image. If we think we're going left but you want us to go right simply turn the map on us and cause us to walk God be greater than we are because God you are greater yes. than we are I pray the blessings of God upon those who are in state legislative positions and God that you would lead them and guide them fill them full of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I give you praise hallelujah would you clap your hands and thank Thank God. Very quickly, connect groups tonight at 6 p.m. And I encourage you to be a part of that. Also, outreach, door knocking opportunity will happen this coming Saturday, March the 18th. We will meet at the church at 10 a.m. We'll leave in a church van and travel to a neighborhood in the Madison area to knock doors and to give out cards. And we'll be back to the church by 1230. Also, harvest training, of which I am encouraging every person who is a member of this church to be a part of this. April the 1st. Everybody say April the 1st first <clears throat> don't be a fool and miss this one just don't do it 
Amen. Because God is building this church and we need everybody involved. Harvest training will happen. Brother Carey is directing and leading that. Also, our ladies' night out, Sister Deborah Parker is helping to spearhead that. Will be April the 15th. And thank you for those who are continuing to give. Amen. To our uh, Save Our Children offering. And we're going to have a chance to give whenever the altar call is given. Would you lift your hands again and would you prepare yourself for the preaching of the word? Brother Nate White, would you come and deliver what thus saith the word of the Lord? Somebody say amen. amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Revelation chapter 2. I want to say what an honor it has been to be in Madison this weekend. I look forward to a great relationship with this church. Of course, I give honor to your pastor and his family. They have been so gracious and so kind, took such good care of us. And uh, just an honor to have uh, my family here in such a great place. And I believe that this church is a great place. I believe that it is a, it is a safe place. Amen. And, uh, of course, again, to Bishop Dillon, Mama D, in their absence, and to my friend, Brother Bates, who is ministering out today, uh, to his great wife, and, of course, Emma, who is uh, one of the sweetest babies I've ever been around. I've not yet won her over to let me hold her yet. Uh, she did hold my wife's hand yesterday as we drank coffee. Uh, but I think I have some mini M&Ms that are coming, some oatmeal pies that are coming, because I am not above bribery. And uh, I'll do anything I can. And, uh, but uh, I, I, I will say this, uh, just because of the dynamics of what I believe God is going to say today, and what God has already spoke to me, uh, even a month, month and a half prior to my arrival. Uh, Brother Bates and I are friends, and we do speak, you know, weekly or occasionally and we'll talk i'm gonna be honest with you rarely is it about spiritual things occasionally it's spiritual but uh we both are quite into uh smoking meats on smokers and pellet grills and seasonings we've already planned a trip to some place here in madison that's a grill of mississippi something another and i'm all about it and so uh i'm all about the ministry of smoking meats and uh if y'all have a small group i'll be here for that next week <laughs> But uh, rarely, in fact, two weeks prior to us coming, I told Daryl, I said, Bubba, I'm not going to call you or talk to you for the next couple of weeks. Uh, not because he gives me the down low on the church, but I just didn't want there to be any misconception or anybody to be able to say that God had, or that, that anything less than God had spoke to me. And so I, uh, I want to preach today. I am strong, strong in confidence, but heavy in burden for what the Lord wants to speak. If you missed Friday night, if you missed last night, you missed a great opportunity to get on board with the rest of the church. You missed a great, I understand there are some things that you just can't be here, but for those that just could have been and just didn't, you missed a great opportunity. Revelations chapter two and verse 20, the Bible says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things that are sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication. And she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And then God takes a very strong, very commanding approach when he says, And I will kill her children with death. And all the church shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according 
to your works. Today I will preach a very heavy word. A word that I knew I would preach to this congregation before a date was ever set for me to come back. I will preach to you a word that maybe it's not for every individual here. But I've not just come to preach to the people that are in this congregation today. I have come to confront a spirit that is trying to control this region. I've come today to control and, and try to confront a spirit that has tried to manipulate and get its way and get its, its hands and its fingers inside of Parkway so that it can stall out and so that it can rob this church of the revival that God wants to give it. We'll preach today about how to identify Jezebel before I'm done some of you will be very very nervous because God is going to reveal who you are some of you are going to get very antsy and you're going to start fiddling with things and you're going to distract yourself with children or or your cell phone or you're going to have to hurry up and go to the restaurant you're going to have to you're going to distract yourself and here's why before we ever get to that point obviously some of you have to take children out and I'm not I'm not trying to make a blanket statement here but some of you are going to become very antsy because words that you have spoken to other people that are sitting in this congregation God is going to reveal your real motives and your true spirit God is going to reveal why some that have already left, some that have already gotten mad and blamed people and blamed the preacher and blamed the church, they've already left. It's going, you're going to have, you're going to have a light bulb go off in your mind and it's going to dawn on you that that's the reason why they left. That's the reason that spirit tried, because it tried to cause division. And God is going to identify the spirit of Jezebel here today. I come to you nervous. But I come to you today confident of what God has called me to do. Would you mind lifting up your hands all across this building? Lay down your Bibles, lay down your tablets, your phone, whatever it may be. And I'm going to ask you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray that God would begin to let revelation settle down in this place. That God would begin to let revelation move in this congregation right now. Come on, let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on now, why don't you put your hands together for a God that cares about us. A God that will speak to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn around, high five your neighbor as you're seated. Say, let's preach with the preacher. If you're not going to preach with me, stay standing so I know who to preach to. Make my job a little easier. From the very start... <clears throat> of this message you need to know that I plan to lead you down the brutal and bloody path of a woman named Jezebel not only is it necessary but I think it is absolutely imperative to the well-being and the future of Parkway that we take a look at the life of this woman that the Bible speaks so strongly about and he takes special attention to speak against this woman. Understand first and foremost that the Bible only calls her name, calls her by name 19 times. Of those 19 times that it speaks of this woman and the spirit that she harbored in scores of scriptures throughout your Bible... In all 19 times, the Bible calls her by name. Not once is it in a positive light. 
Not one time is the name Jezebel mentioned in the word of God. And it is anything that is positive. It is anything that is able to be spoken in a progressive manner. Can you imagine how great the word of God is and being honored to have our name mentioned in it and yet not one single time out of 19 is God able to find anything good to say about us. There was literally nothing Thing about this woman that God found anything good about. She was a thorn in the plan of God. Her very existence was contrary to the righteousness of God. She tried and she intended to hinder God's kingdom and bring chaos and confusion and struggle to the people of God. While I could start at the beginning and list them one by one, I think it would be better to show you the general feelings of God toward this woman. As always, to see the bottom line, you have to go to the end of the story. While we may, in fact, look at some other things that God had to say about her, I think it would be a good idea today to skip over the historical books and skip over the the things of the Old Testament and find ourselves in the book of Revelation as God expresses one final opinion about this woman named Jezebel. We encounter the final opinion of Jezebel while God is dealing with the church of Thyatira. God is speaking to the seven churches of Asia and he tells Thyatira in Revelation Revelations 2 and verse 18. He says, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and patience and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. He told them, I know all of the things that you're doing for me. I know all the great points of the church and I appreciate it. The things that you are doing is great. The things that you're doing is necessary. You are for all practical purposes, Thyatira. You are a productive church. You are a progressive church. Thyatira, I see everything that you are doing and I appreciate it. I want you to understand that I've taken notice of the fact that you have gotten better with age. You have progressed and you have become a great and an influential church. But here's where at this point, God takes a quick and a frightening turn. He speaks to them and says in verse 20, but I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things that are sacrificed in other words I've got a problem with you church in spite of all the good there is about you I have somewhat against you because you've allowed a spirit into your church that is perverting my message. It is perverting and it is going around what is supposed to happen and you've allowed them to eat things that are sacrificed to idols. Things that the people of God 
were never supposed to touch. God said, in spite of all your good, there is something that turns my stomach in your midst. You've allowed this woman, you've allowed Jezebel to not only live among you, but you've allowed her to be so prevalent that she has influenced my people. It must be noted that these words were in a revelation. They were written generations after Jezebel had physically died. Understand that this was not the physical representation of Jezebel of the Old Testament. But God was speaking of this woman and he was speaking about the spirit that still resides in the church. The Lord was speaking of someone in that congregation that had the same spirit and the same rotten attitude that Jezebel had. Here we see God's anger kindled even at recognizing the spirit of Jezebel amongst his church even though it was in someone else. God gets angry and his righteousness stands at the defense of his people. God gets angry. She had died long ago but even after all of this time God had a passionate disdain for anything that resembled the spirit and the perversion and the compromise and the lackadaisical attitude of Jezebel. He was letting them know the reason you have the problems you have is because you've let that spirit run under the surface. The reason church you got the spirit of Jezebel in your world uh, is you have allowed it to operate uh, and you've allowed it to live unchecked uh, and that's why God was upset with his church but it's what God says next that we must see not only did God rebuke the church for allowing her spirit to influence his people but he went on to say I gave her a chance to repent of her fornication and she refused behold I will cast her into a bed and anybody that joins up with her will be sent into great tribulation and I will kill her children with death and when I'm finally forced to judge all that is about Jezebel and all that are involved from the church I am I'm the one that sees beyond your outward appearance and I see what is in your heart help me now Jesus I see beyond the shiny exterior and I see the real spirit and the real heart of a man the question we must ask ourselves today is this what was it about Jezebel that God despised What were the attributes that God was trying to point out to his church unless they fall to destruction? God said that he would cast the spirit of Jezebel into the cesspool of her own sins. He went on to say that anybody that joined up with her would face great tribulation. He hated the spirit so much that God said, I I don't even want her unholy offspring crawling around my church. In fact, I'll kill everything that resembles that spirit. That spirit can't live in my church if the church is going to be successful. What was it about this woman that grieved the heart of God? What was it about Jezebel that God felt he needed to point out things that made her so evil and wicked amongst so many. What was there about this woman that God detested that he was ready to put judgment on her and on the offspring and in all those that allowed her to live in their midst. What was there in the life of this woman that God so ignited God's wrath 
that he said, I refuse to let her little spirits crawl around my church. I've come today to tell you that God absolutely hated that spirit. He despised the very existence of the spirit of Jezebel uh, that she had. But what was there, what was there about Jezebel uh, that made God's anger so vile? What was it that made God's anger so strong, Pastor? I suppose we could just take the easy way out and resign ourselves in the reason to the fact that she was a sinful woman. We could just say, well, God hated her because she was wrapped up in a bunch of sin. She was wrapped up, but reality demands that we admit that every man has sinned and fallen short of the mercies of God. So it must have been more than just sin. It only takes one verse to prove that because God spoke and said, I gave her space to repent. It started off as a soul that God loved, but it ended in a spirit that God despised. A small amount of research will show us that she was a Phoenician woman, and she was the daughter of a pagan priest that overthrew the Phoenician king. This pagan priest, this king, if you please, was the father of Jezebel, and his name was Ethbel. The name Ethbel is from two original words that are significant to today's message. Baal was a Phoenician idol that we read about throughout the Bible and it meant master or lord. And the word Eth meant a coiler, a debater, and a contradictor. Thus Ethbel simply meant that Jezebel's daddy was a master at contradicting and fighting and quarreling and finding issues Zidon was the place that Ethbel conquered and ironically pastor it was the only place one of the only places that Israel never conquered in Canaan Jezebel had seed in her from her lineage, from her very birth. There was something in her that was, a, that was skilled at contradicting the things of God. They know how to contradict things like purity and righteousness. And now is where we will start digging and we will get into the heart of the message. And some will become very uncomfortable. I must preach to this congregation and tell you, the first way you identify Jezebel, you watch out for those individuals that are quick to contradict the things that we have stood for as an apostolic church for generations. It is a sure sign that something is unholy about their flesh when they find it easy to fight and debate against the precious things that set us apart. I'm not talking about our new converts. I'm not talking about our guests today, but I'm talking about some of you perfect Pentecostals and you poetic prayers. I'm talking about some that have nothing better to do with your time than to constantly contradict what God is trying to do. You've been around long enough and you know what's right and you know what is wrong but you refuse to put your spirit in check. You always like to fight and argue against biblical absolutes. They like to demand answers from the pastor as to why he's preaching things and why he's taking a stand against things. They love to quarrel and fight. It's sad, but it's true. There are people in the middle of every congregation and every real move of God that are quick to debate and argue against the plan of God. That's why there's always going to be those people that are constantly pushing and they're constantly upset. Pastor, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be rude or hateful, but there are some people you will never please because if you give in this much, they're going to want you to go a little more because they are skilled and they are masters at contradicting and fighting and causing problems. In every, sadly, in every real move of God, there are people that have questions and they always have a problem. Question the music and the singing. It's too loud, it's too soft, it's too old, it's too new. They like to argue about upgrades to the facility. They say, well, we don't need a stage that big. We don't need light. Why don't we put more lights in? Let's put a smoke machine in. They always got a problem with something. There are people that love to question whether or not the shepherd of our souls has a right to preach against certain.
certain things and draw the line for the church and say, as for this church, this is where we stand. If they don't like the answer that Pastor Jason gives them, they go talk to Bishop Dillon because he'll understand. He'll take my side. And if you don't like Bishop Dillon, you come to Pastor Jason and you try to get, and if that doesn't work, you go to Brother Bates. You've learned to circumvent leadership and cause issues and cause questions and cause chaos. They have no problem or arguing that certain ones are justified in backsliding and walking away all because you found an excuse for them. Oh, I, I'm not fooled today. We probably won't do a lot of shouting. But maybe that's what you need is to be confronted with your rotten attitude. They'll push against any stand that the church takes on any subject, whether you agree with it or not. You just like to fight about it. Pastor says we play sports, then I just don't think we should play sports. Pastor says no sports, well, I think we should be able to play sports. Pastor says the skirt length is here or the hair or the, the, or the platform got, well, I think we should be, or I don't think that's right. We always find an issue with everything that is said. It's not that you really care. You're just a Jezebel and you love to cause problems and you love to cause issues. You will push the limit just a little bit further than the guidelines that Pastor has set for the congregation. Please hear the voice of this preacher. You better watch out for that kind of spirit. Something in their nature loves their idols more than they love God. They love to control and rule their environment more than they want to submit to the presence of God. How do you identify Jezebel? They love to control everything. They love to control it all. They are constantly offended by something or someone. Hmm. They find that they can control and manipulate the people around them and the environment they're in by constantly being offended by something. You won't say, you know exactly, I'm telling you, this is the revelation that God's fixing to start giving you and God's going to start identifying. There are people in this building right now, you can immediately think of someone that you won't say certain things in front of because you don't feel like arguing about it. You won't have certain conversations. You won't even bring up certain things because you don't feel like having to justify yourself. And you don't, have to, don't feel like having to explain your submission to the man of God. You won't say certain things to them. You won't contra- contradict their gossiping mouth because you worry that they'll carry a lie out about you. And they'll try to destroy you like they're destroying somebody to you. They've learned if they can get mad and pitch a big enough fit about what the pastor's said or what leadership is doing they can try and put you in a box and try to keep them from preaching against your little sin and preach you up you try and get them to quit talking about your bad attitude and your rotten spirit go on Bubba keep laughing keep joking God is getting tired of the Jezebel spirit. I just don't think he has a right to preach. Like If you would have been here the last two nights, you would have heard all the things that God had to say to the core of the church. And if at any time I get out of line, your pastor has all the authority and the ability to stop me. But I'm telling you what God's saying right now. He's getting fed up with your controlling, manipulative spirit. You want to know what's happening? Come here, Bob. Come help me real quick. Here's what's happened. We have learned. Stand behind pastor right there. We've learned to get pastor in a pulpit. And we've learned to get offended and get mad about stuff. And we've learned to just go ahead. Come on, put your arm around him. We've learned to put pastor in this box. And pastor, if you preach against this, I'm going to get up and leave. If you say something about my sin, I'm going to get up and walk out on you. Pastor, oh, be my pastor. I love the Dillons. I love Parkway. But pastor, don't you preach against anything I don't like. If you do, I'm going to get offended. If you do, I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk out. And I'm going to talk about you. And I'm going to run my mouth on Facebook. Yes, sir. If it wasn't true, you wouldn't feel the resistance that we're feeling right now. I got an idea. Why don't we take the chains off this pulpit? Why don't we take the chains off this platform and say, preacher, preach to me. If you got to hurt my feelings, hurt my feelings. If you got to turn my family upside down, turn my family. Preach, preacher, preach, preacher.
yet I have to be totally honest with you in telling you that I think it went beyond just arguing against the plan of God that made God hate her spirit. I think it was more than just her ability to control people and things by her constant seeking for an offense. Actually, I can find other people in the word of God that did the exact same things. It was Peter who argued against salvation to the Gentiles when God let down the sheet from heaven with unclean things that symbolizing the Gentiles. It was the apostles that passionately debated subjects as God was unfolding his entire purpose for the pouring out of the Holy Ghost and the church in history. Perhaps the key difference between them and Jezebel is that they repented before God. So while it was a disgusting taste in God's mouth, I believe it was so much more than just being controlling and just being offended against the things of God that caused him to hate her spirit. Look further with me into history. We see that Israel's king Ahab had much business with the Phoenicians and to solidify this relationship Ahab married Jezebel it was to say the very least a marriage of convenience it was here when convenience became his priority that things went terribly wrong in his world the quest for convenience marked the first time that any king of Israel had ever married for convenience and had ever married a heathen princess. Let me show you what kind of things happen to your world by making convenience the extent of your walk with God instead of commitment. When Ahab started walking in convenience instead of commitment, watch the very first things that Jezebel walks in and starts doing. She go and she went ahead and she tore down all the altars that were in the kingdom. And then she turned and she started killing preachers. One after another she began to kill the voice of the men of God in her life. In fact, she would have killed all of them had it not been for a servant named Obadiah that hid a hundred prophets in the cave and fed them with bread and water. I want you to look at it now. The first two things that she did was tear down the altars and kill the prophets. Anytime an individual starts serving God in convenience, they start resenting anything that can be a righteous influence in their world. She so hated the commitment that came with living for God that she was willing to murder the men of God in her life instead of any up and live committed. It was much more convenient to kill the men of God than it was to live a life of righteousness and purity that was acceptable to God. There was something in the spirit of Jezebel that despised authority. <laughs> you need to know it didn't stop in Jezebel's day. <laughs> oh no, it didn't stop there. The second way you identify Jezebel amongst you is by recognizing those that hate spiritual authority and the men of God in your world. I almost, Pastor... Pastor Christine, I almost had the whole platform come down because I know this can get very awkward for pastor, but I want you to see the face of the one that some of you allow people to destroy in front of you. Don't worry about responding. You may accidentally identify the Jezebel that doesn't want to respond beside you. I don't want to cause anybody to have to fake it until you make it today. Don't, don't worry about clapping at this moment. You find those people... They hate everything to do with spiritual. Bubba, they hate anything to do with spiritual authority in their life. I've, I've heard people go so far as to say, I am the Lord over this home. I don't care what the preacher says. If I say you can, you can. If I say you can't, then you can. I'm the Lord over this home. Don't worry about that preacher. It's the preacher, then me, then the... No! Those are the kind of people that hate authority. Those are the kind of people that hate any spiritual influence. When your relationship with God is built on convenience, it's easy to start resenting the preacher. It's easy to resent the conviction that pulls you to an altar. It's easy to get mad and offended at the preacher that's challenging your carnal attitude. You have learned to disregard the voice of a man of God in your life, and now your spirit is crawling through every service and it's trying to find a way to find fault with authority and fault with the preacher and fault with the pastor's family. You despise hard preaching. You despise conviction preaching. You hate preaching that challenges your spirit and contradicts your convenient Christianity. That's why you try to assassinate the preacher every time you get the chance. That's why you try to assassinate the message as soon as church is over. 
over. You can't wait for altar call so you can start sending text messages, gossiping, and assassinating the preacher in the pulpit. Oh, it doesn't happen? Am I making too big a deal about it? Then why have some of you just put your phone back in your pocket from sending the text message you were about to send? Hey, I ain't, I ain't come to be ugly and I ain't come to be brutal, but I have come in defense of God's church today. Huh. If God would show me who you are, I'd come talk to you and I wouldn't hurt anybody else and I wouldn't beat anybody else up. But God hasn't revealed to me who you are and who's got the rotten spirit just yet, so we'll continue. You hate anything to do with the man of God. You hate when preacher gets up and when pastor gets up and he starts preaching about certain things and he starts preaching against certain things and he starts making comments that God put into his life. He didn't make that comment to hurt you. He didn't make that comment at you. He was just making a blanket comment. But something in your carnal attitude got mad and it got offended so you rose up and you tried to tell everybody else. some of you in this place right now you may not be the Jezebel but right now God is revealing to you conversations that you have had with people that have left and blamed it on the preacher and blamed it on Bishop Dylan and blamed it on the youth team and blamed it on the music and you're now being revealed it ain't got nothing to do with them it's Jezebel that could not stand the voice some of you can't wait for me to get done preaching uh, so that you can get on live stream uh, and go back and critique everything that I'm saying. Uh, you can't wait for church to get over uh, so you can call those that have walked away uh, and say, yep, you're right. They're just going to hurt your feelings. Uh, yep, they talk. Yes, I'm preaching about Jezebel today. Uh, yes, I'm preaching about a spirit uh, that's trying to suffocate uh, and kill our move of God. How do you identify Jezebel? They're the ones that's trying to drive a wedge between you and the preacher. They're the ones that's constantly trying to get you to ignore the voice of the man of God in your life. They hate authority. They hate spiritual covering. They despise a real man. Hey, if you, wanna, if you want somebody just to tickle your ears, you're probably not going to find it here anymore. If you want somebody just to make you feel good, you might as well resign it within yourself. We're not here just to patty cake. We're not here just to powder bottoms and make you feel good about yourself. We are here to be a voice of a God in your life we're here to get you your pastor's not here to be your buddy your pastor's not here just to be your I'm going to tell you right now there is not a more genuinely kind loving man than this man right here but he was not called to be your friend he was not called to be your buddy he was called to be a man of God he He's not here to be a life coach. He's not here just to help you, but he's here to get you to heaven. Come on, somebody needs to have an attitude. Preach, preach, preach. Yes. What you need to recognize is that you're not just going against the preacher. But you have learned, even if you are unaware of this ability, you have learned to go against the word of God and even God himself and against the presence of God. You want to know why you get so mad at preaching and you get upset with the man of God? It's because you want to serve God out of convenience, but God wants you to serve him out of commitment. You want a part-time passion, but God wants full-time commitment. You want to walk carefree in the flesh, but God wants you to walk with a cross, bearing it in the spirit. And while there may be a few Jezebels around that want to try to destroy the influence of a man of God I'm glad to tell you today there are still Obadiahs in Parkway that'll protect the man of God that'll protect the pastors there's more that are will hey I'm gonna go ahead and give the adversary notice there's more in this church that love the preacher and they love apostolic doctrine than those that want to destroy it there's more that love pastor Dylan and sister Dylan there's more that love bishop and mama than those that want to try to destroy hey Obadiah stand up stand up Obadiah they love preaching they love the altar they love truth they love pulpits they love a real move of God. Don't give me a watered down move of God. Don't give me nothing that's fake. Give me the real thing. Give me a move of God.
You see, to Obadiah, it's not a matter of convenience. It's a matter of commitment. What else is seen? What else is seen in the pursuit of convenient Christianity? We need only look at how she reacted to the news of Elijah having revival on Mount Carmel to see that Jezebel hates revival. In fact, she threatened to kill Elijah because she was furious of how that her false idols and false prophets had been unsuccessful in disputing the power of God. We know that fire was falling and God was answering. We know that God was moving and people were seeing revelation of who God really was. And it so vexed the spirit of Jezebel that she set herself against not only the man of God, but she set herself against the move of God in her life. She hated the idea that revival was happening around her. How do you identify Jezebel? Isabel Parkway, look out for the ones that are always trying to keep revival from happening in the church. They always have a problem with revival going on. They're constantly looking for a reason and an issue with why the church is growing. Right now, the spirit of Jezebel is so angry with Parkway and with the man of God because we are having revival. That spirit cannot stand. That's why you've had the influx of problems, Pastor. That's why Jezebel has reared his ugly head and is trying to hear you here we may not get much further than this right here the reason why some of you have had the absolute chaos in your life is because the church is going to have revival the church is going to grow and the church is going to move and we're going to progress and Jezebel can't stand it that spirit wants to kill revival that ch- I spoke it, Pastor, I told you over a month ago on the phone. If this is okay, I want to share this. Pastor called me and just said, hey, man, so excited, so happy. Just like he always, I'm, I guarantee you could stomp his toe and he'd shake your hand and thank you for it. The problem is that some of you have taken, you have taken it for granted that he'll do that. Well, Pastor, just, hey, I, 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 I've been preaching 30 minutes, okay? Give me a little bit. The problem with that is we take it for granted that pastor's just a good guy and he'll forgive and he's, he'll get over it. He'll, he'll be fine. He won't really care that. No, 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 no. What you don't realize is that you are slowly but surely assassinating the man of God in your life. I told pastor a month, over a month ago on the telephone, I told him, I said, pastor, I'm going to tell you what the Lord spoke to me back in January. And then the Lord spoke to me again at the end of January. And the Lord has confirmed it multiple times since then until I got back here today. The Lord spoke to me and said that the reason that this, the adversary fights this church so much is because you are a revival church. You are an apostolic church. And the adversary hates revival. Jezebel hates a move of God. Jezebel hates anything that's out of the ordinary and shakes up the normal you want to know why Jezebel hates Parkway so much because you don't care who comes to your church you want everybody you want the Hispanics you want the blacks and the whites you you want the Asians you want the drug addicts and the alcoholics you want the prostitutes and the gang members you want the homosexuals we want everybody at our church nobody's too bad for our church and nobody's too good for our church Hey, and I realize I'm in the heart of Mississippi, but can I tell you that when it comes to living for God, there is no such thing as a black church. There is no such thing as a white church. There's God's church. We don't need to segregate off. We don't need to try to separate ourselves. We are the body of Christ. When we were born again, when God loved us, we just became the children of the Almighty. But God sent me today to tell this congregation, the reason why you've had so much chaos, Pastor, is because there's apostolic authority. The, the, the adversary hates the apostolic authority that this church has. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been preaching in the state of Mississippi since I was 18 years old, which means that's too many years too far. I don't want to tell you how old I am because I'm starting to feel my age a little bit. But I've been preaching in this state since I was 18 years old. And since then, there has been a strong, oppressive spirit. There has been a spirit that tries to control and manipulate. And we run off preachers if we don't like them. And we get rid of pastor's wives and we assassinate them. If, we don't, if they hurt our feelings, oh, well, we'll find another. There's, another. there's a church on every street corner in the state of Mississippi. You can't throw a rock and not hit another. 
another church of some kind because we're just saturated and that's what's wrong is we feel like if we don't like it here we'll just pick up and go somewhere else if we don't like what they say if pastor preaches the strong standards too strong I'll just go to a church that'll let me do what I want to do and that's why you're in the condition you're in ma'am that's why you're in the condition you're in sir because you've allowed Jezebel to control and you've allowed the influence and the spirit of Jezebel to get in hear me tonight take notice of those that stand in the face of growth you want to know why the spirit doesn't like revival because the more we grow the less influence they have the more spiritual authority we have the less they are able to control the atmosphere that's why people like to manipulate the gifts and they want to seem spiritual but they are anything but they just want to be in control but when we have apostolic authority they can't take over a service when we've got apostolic authority they can't take over a church because God is going to I gotta hurry we know from scripture that she caused problems amongst the people of God. She was an instigator that loved to stir things up and create a mess in God's kingdom. In fact, the Bible tells us in 1 Kings 21 and 25, he said, there was none like unto Ahab, which did wickedness in the sight of the Lord. In other words, God was, again, can you imagine that God saying there was none like Jason Dillon that created chaos in my kingdom. There was none like Ahab that done evil in the sight of the Lord. But watch what he says. He says there was none who had done wickedness in the sight of the Lord. Whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Ahab was sinning but God said it's not just Ahab it's Jezebel stirring up trouble in my kingdom that I'm really mad about I I can get over the sin I I can get over those that are ignorant of the devices but I cannot stand a spirit that constantly stirs you can be assured that it's the spirit of Jezebel that loves to stir up issues in the church they'll let it rest for a little bit but they love to bring up things from the past and see how much they can get going on old issues they love to stir up things between saints things between the pulpit and the pew uh, issues and differences uh, between leaders uh, and leadership uh, the spirit of Jezebel loves to stir up strife uh, and create confusion uh, Jezebel uh, Jezebel tries to stop revival uh, by destroying our new converts uh, they'll find a problem with our new converts uh, and our new babies in the church uh, and though their spirits are rotten and unholy uh, they'll try to pick apart everything uh, that is wrong with the baby you want to see a preacher get mad uh, start messing with our new converts converts start messing with our babies in Christ it's not your job to beat them into shape it's not your job to get them straightened out let them fall in love with God quit running them off quit assassinating revival Jezebel tries to abort our revival because before our babies can even get fully developed and standing on their own two feet we go in and try to tell them what they need to fix and what they need to do and how they better march it no what's happening is Jezebel is aborting our revival and we've got souls that have walked away hurt and wounded because the spirit of Jezebel tried to control Jezebel tries to kill our revival by saying well it ain't never been done like that before I don't know why Pastor Jason keeps trying to do that Bishop wouldn't have done that hey Bishop seems fit to put pastor in place so you gotta be in alignment I don't know why they're doing all that I don't know why we keep having the. I don't like it like this I don't like it like that hey Jezebel you better be careful you're revealing your true spirit and it's gonna be easy for the rest of us to identify you and yet it appears that the truest way to identify Jezebel is found somewhere deeper. Jezebel has stamped her name on the history as the face of all that is malicious and revengeful and cruel in the presence of God. She was guided by no principles. She had no hint of morality. She had no fear of God. See, that's a problem in today's generation. We don't fear anything anymore. We're not scared of God. Think about it. When's the last time? I've been preaching 40 minutes now, so give me just a few more minutes. When's the last time that in your contradicted and sinful and carnal attitude, you were actually afraid of what God could do to you? One preacher was preaching. 
one preacher was preaching. In fact, I'll tell you who it was. It was my dad. My dad is known all over this movement as a premier conviction preacher. I mean, my, you think I'm bad. Whoo. Be raised underneath Bishop Doug White. He'll peel the paint off the walls. He'll preach hell so hot you'll, you'll, you'll beg to go to heaven. But he preached one of them old school conviction messages one night, Pastor. And in the back, y'all may be great golden people. I have no idea. But right over here in the back right corner was a young lady. that said, I watched her. She sat with her arms, curl, arms folded and her legs crossed. And she just sat and smiled and looked at everybody. People, I'm talking literally, the conviction of God was so heavy, people were falling in the altars and crawling down the aisles to the presence of God. But she sat unaffected. She sat unmoved. Pastor walked, Dad walked back to her. Bishop walked back to her. and said, ma'am, does the presence of God not bother you anymore? He said, ma'am, does... Does conviction preaching not stir you anymore? What, what is, how, what, what, what's the story? She said, oh, preacher. She said, you ever seen the haunted movies? You ever seen The Exorcist? She said, none of this stuff bothers me. Hollywood has all of this. She said, you ever watch, and she began to name, and what, name off horror movies, and she began to name off books that she had read that had to do with sorcer sorcery and, and witchcraft. Hey, I, I'm not trying to just take your, I'm not trying to take advantage of your time, but my wife and I went yesterday with our kids to a store that's, a bookstore that's closing down, and we began to walk through the children's books, and there was books on how to be wizards, and there was books on how to identify as what you want to identify as. They're not waiting until you're 18, 19 years old anymore. They're not waiting until you're an adult. They're trying to indoctrinate our children you want to know why conviction doesn't scare us anymore we keep binge watching Netflix until we're not affected by anything anymore pastor if I'm out of line you stop me I just felt I just felt Jezebel say he ain't got no right to preach against that I'm not preaching against Netflix I'm talking about, I'm preaching against the things that are negatively influencing your spirit you want to know why young people can walk in and they can get involved in things that are not holy and that are not of God? You want to know why young people can walk in and be involved in all kinds of stuff? It's because of what they've been watching and what they've been listening to. Well, my kids don't have Netflix. Now, but what are they reading? Oh, I know I can end up on church milk or I could end up on Instagram. Another preacher preaching against, uh, preaching against all kinds of wizardry and, and vampires. I'm not saying in and of itself it'll send you to hell. But what I am saying is it's opening a door to you and it's opening a portal into your life you want to know why it's happening because we're, ex we're exposing ourselves. we're allowing our spirits to be open you want to know what's wrong with Jezebel Jezebel hates revival Jezebel hates a move of God Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost Come on, I'm asking you to lift your hands all across this building. I'm trying to find a place for let God just have it, but, but God's moving and God's speaking around. I'm asking you to lift your hands all across this building. While others did many of the very same things, we see how God grew so weary of her godless spirit that he hated it. In fact, he said, I'm going to judge her and even those that are associated. I don't even, I don't even want her slobbering babies to be crawling around my kingdom. Why? Why? When others found redemption over the same things. When others rose above those same mistakes in their life. When others, uh, we have examples of other people doing the exact same thing. And yet they went on to do great exploits for God. That's right. Let me preach about the spirit of Jezebel. And let's look back before the painted face. Let's look back before the ungodly spirit tried to seduce others into her sin. Let's look back before she stirred up trouble among the people. Let's look back before convenience became the, the primary goal of serving God. Let's go back before the idol worship and before fornication was committed. Before indifference towards sin was promoted. Revival was hindered by her unfaithfulness. Preacher and messages were assassinated. There's a reason why she'd done these things. 
There's a reason why she could do all of this and still find absolutely no mercy in God. There's a reason why God seemingly despised her very existence and even the presence of her spirit in her If you look back before all these things, you will find the answer. Much like her father, her answer is listed in her name. Her name was Jezebel. And it, in its purest definition, it simply means unhusbanded. Oh yes, we know that she was married to Ahab. But when you look at her life and her attitude, you find that she was never really husbanded to anything. In other words, in our language, it simply meant that she was never under subjection to anything in her life. She refused to be under submission to anybody or anything. And now, God begins to reveal the people in your life. And the conversations that you've had with people. And you can't put your finger on it. Honey, there's those kind of people you just can't quite put your finger. Something's just off with them. I, I, they seem like nice people, but something's just off. I'll tell you what it is. They refuse to be submitted to anybody or anything in the kingdom of God. Those people that refuse to listen to anything pastor has to say. They refuse to be faithful to the house of God even when they could have been. Yes, she had a husband, but she was never really submitted because even she knew how to control and stir up Ahab. You want to know how to identify Jezebel? You want to know the reason that God despises us? Think back now. How obvious is it now that you know what to look for? How clearly do you see it today, Parkway? All you must do is recognize the spirit that refuses to be under submission to the word of God. A spirit that hates the man of God. A spirit that refuses to submit to the ways of God. The conviction of God's message. They refuse to be touched. They refuse to be moved. Hear me when I tell you that God's problem with Jezebel was so much more than idolatry. It was so much more than makeup and jewelry. Others had sinned just as bad. Others had done the very same thing she had done. The difference between Jezebel and so many others is that she ignored the voice of God but they vowed in his presence. She despised spiritual authority but they trembled at the authority of God's anointing. She tried to kill the preacher in their world but they stood at attention and reverence at the man of God she refused to repent of her evil and wicked ways but they fell in sackcloth and ashes and fell in their world to repentance there's a reason why Jezebel continually walked in those terrible horrible unholy ways she was never submitted in her life you know it's the people that have made this exact comment pastor doesn't have a right to say those kinds of things I'll listen to that leader I ain't listening to that one pastor Jason doesn't hurt my feelings Pastor Dylan really loves me. Pastor Jason just likes to, likes to push us and likes to get us out of our comfort zone. I know Bishop Dylan will take care of me. I'm not sure about this new guy. I, 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 I know Pastor Dylan will have my back because he's afraid that I'm going to leave or he's afraid. I don't really care what the youth team has to say and I don't really care what my group leaders have to say. It's people, I don't mind moving. I don't, I don't mind God moving just as long as he doesn't expect me to move from my critical and carnal mentality. Who does God think he is to challenge my will? Who does God think he is to try to get me to move? How dare the church expect me to walk in unity with them? I don't even like half of them. I just go there because it's the biggest thing happening in the city. And so it is here that I rush to try and close this message. But I must address one final aspect of the scriptures that we read tonight. And here is where we'll go beyond just who Jezebel is. And we'll go beyond just the spirit of Jezebel in our churches. And here, I will do my best to try to get the attention of all of Parkway. I don't care if you're in the building, if you're watching live stream, or if you're in your living room, and God is troubling your spirit. Ma'am, I see you standing in your kitchen. I see you fixing Sunday afternoon lunch. But I'm praying that God would send a spirit into your kitchen right now. You're wearing a flowery apron, ma'am. And God is desperately trying to get your attention. Woo. 
Revelation 2 and 20. Thyatira, you've done a lot of good. But I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel. Revelations 2 and 22 says, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Except they repent of their... Here we see the Lord trying to warn his church about the dangers of even associating with that spirit. He told the church, I'm angry with you because you've allowed the spirit to perpetuate through the church. You've allowed that offensive, manipulative, controlling, unsubmitted spirit to to roam free in my congregation. And so now I have to tell you that the ones that join in with Jezebel are going to be thrown into great tribulation. You need to know, saint of God, you may not have been the one that killed the preacher with your words, but because you allowed that spirit to feel free and comfortable around you. God is going to handle you the same way that he handles Jezebel. Oh, I know. I know you didn't spew your hatred for the leaders of the church, but you allowed that spirit of Jezebel to spew her unholy gossip all over you and all over your dinner table. And now God's got to deal with it. The reason it is so important that we identify the spirit of Jezebel in Parkway is because if you are not careful, you will be caught up in her devices and not even realize that's what's going on. God said even the ones that allow it to happen are going to have to pay a price. No, you don't have to. No, we can't make you live in God's plan. No, you don't have to listen to another thing that is said or done as long as Nate White stands in this pulpit. But you need to know when God quits moving in your world. It's because you allowed Jezebel a safe haven in your life. You need to know that God's given you space to get rid of the critical attitude. And if you don't get over it very soon, the Lord's going to start ridding his church of that rotten spirit. Right? Right, 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 right. Whew. God cannot do in Parkway what he is desiring to do until we rid ourselves of a spirit. We didn't open the doors and invite it. We didn't hang a welcome sign on the front doors of the church saying, welcome Jezebel, but it has found its way in. And you want to know why people manipulate and why people try to control and why people get mad and people get frustrated? It's because we've done it and we've allowed it to go unchecked. There are people in this building right now. You have had conversations and you have spoke to people and you have spoken words and you've tried to segregate and you've tried to move and you try to get people pushed apart and you try to drive a wedge between the man of God and his church. You want me to tell you what? you're being driven by you're being driven by the spirit of Jezebel and God's only going to tolerate it for so long can I try to somehow preach a little bit of positivity to Parkway today this church is not stopping where we are this church is not a dead church this church is not happy just occupying this corner we can stay here if we want to we can be a good church if we want to be you can be a church that simply exists if you want to but that is not the plan of God God wants us to be alive and thriving and growing church. But we got to get rid of Jezebel. We got to get rid of the things that are trying to stall us and control us. And if we're not very careful, and what scares me is that we, we have very few people that are even emotionally moved. Maybe I just preach that terrible a message. But we have very few people that are even emotionally disturbed by the conviction that is in this place right now. Perhaps I preached too long. 
Some of you, it's the only message you'll show up to hear this entire week and 50 minutes was too long for you. What, what, Elder, when's the last time you were in a service where God was moving so strong that people did not wait for preaching to be over? They just hit the altar. We didn't wait for some beautiful poetic draw to get people to move. It's because we've become comfortable and we've become complacent and we're unfazed. I'm not fooled. Some of you, as soon as I ask you all to stand and close your eyes, some of you will leave as soon as I'm done. Some of you left last night before the service was even done because you just couldn't be inconvenienced with the move of God. Who are you, Jezebel? You want to know why I just kind of walked around earlier in the service and I just kind of took inventory? I was trying to figure out who it was. I, I, I wanted God to show me who, who was I talking to. But God won't show me a face today. God won't, God won't reveal, maybe for your own, your own good, maybe for my own safety. God won't reveal who you are to me today. But let me tell you what I know we got. I know Jezebel's here. But as much as I know Jezebel's here, I know Obadiah's here. I know Obadiah. Obadiah is strong here. You want to know how I know Obadiah's strong? Because I watched Obadiah's gather around Pastor and Sister Dylan not knowing what I was going to preach today. Not really knowing why, but I watched you as you begin to move out and you begin to gather around. And you begin, I know Obadiah's strong because Obadiah wants to protect the anointing. Obadiah wants to protect the man of God in his life. Obadiah wants and needs the voice of a man of God in his life. Oh, I know. And so I'm done preaching. I'm finished. I could ask the music to come play. I don't want any other musicians. I need a keyboard. I don't want any singers. I don't want you to have any excuse not to respond today. Obadiah, how long are we going to let Jezebel continue to rule Parkway? Obadiah, how long? Hey, I come, I, unless Pastor changes his mind or unless y'all revolt today, I, I'm probably going to be back next Sunday. But when I get back next Sunday, are we going to confront the same thing we kind of confronted today? Or are we going to kill it today? Are we going to cut the head off this thing today? Or are we going to be content just smacking the ground three times and saying, well, maybe we'll defeat it next Sunday? So I open these altars today. Jezebel, you don't have to come. We're going to start praying. Jezebel, if you want to leave, you can. But don't be surprised when God starts dealing with you very bitterly. Don't be surprised, Jezebel. Some of you are trying your best to figure out how this message ain't for you. Come on, we ain't patty caking today. We're going to kill Jezebel. We're going to throw her down out of her high and lofty tower. We're going to throw her down out of her, pit, her high and lofty attitude. We're going to get rid of that arrogant, despiteful spirit that's trying to control. I can't preach good enough to get rid of it. I can't beg you enough to get rid of it. But Obadiah, you can stand and you can cut the head off that thing today. Why don't we tell the adversary we're going to be submitted. We're going to have a man of God. We're going to have spiritual authority in our lives come on we talked about it last night it's time to get militant it's time to stand up and say we're going to go to war with this thing we're going to go to battle with Jezebel you can't control us you can't rob us of revival
Come on, I tell this church in the Holy Ghost, we could break through something right now. We could break through a barrier in this service that would change the landscape of Parkway for eternity. We could break through some spiritual strongholds. You could break away the spiritual stronghold of anger and frustration. You could break away the spiritual stronghold of the things that are hanging on to this church. You want to know why we haven't had revival like we want to see? You want to know why we've had so many that have come in and left? It's because Jezebel has aborted our revival. Jezebel has aborted our move of God. Come on, that's it. That's it. We got to pray. I'm begging you, pray right now. I am begging Parkway. If I've ever been sent with the word, it was today. I'm begging you, pray. I'm begging you, Jezebel, turn from your wicked ways. Hey, there's some good saints. There's some good people in this congregation. But you've been allowing room for that spirit. You've been allowing provision. You're still free friends with people that hate the church break it off get away from it sever the ties Come on, some of you have already quit praying. We're not going to break it in a three-minute altar call. Come on, we're not going to destroy the spirit just coming in and doing the mundane and doing what's expected of us. We need to come in and we need to bind together. I'm asking you to step into spiritual warfare right now. Some of you already need to be planning on relationships that you're going to sever. You need to go ahead and plan on conversations that you're not having again. There are people you're not going to associate with again because they don't love the church and they try to separate you from your man of God. There are some of you in this building, you need to go ahead and separate from some people that are trying to influence you and are trying to get you to walk away. They're trying to get you to settle for less than what God has for you. Come on, that's it. That's it.
Come on. Come on, some of you daddies need to get with your families. You need to get with them, and as a family, you need to submit your spirit to the will of God again. I'm asking for families to get together right now. I want that, Daddy, if you cannot pray with your kids, if you cannot, Mama, if you cannot genuinely pray with your kids and with your husband, something is wrong with the home. Something is wrong with the family. When you can't lead them in prayer, 